The superhero life isn't cheap. Luckily, many of Marvel's most powerful heroes have plenty of cash to burn. From literal gods with untold fortunes to billionaire investors and landed aristocrats, these are the richest heroes in the Marvel Universe. Joey Chapman is the latest in a long line of English heroes who have fought evil as Union Jack. While the previous Union Jacks were part of the wealthy Fallsworth family, Chapman was born into the working class and earned his mask through a baptism by fire. Chapman's entry into the Fallsworth family comes through his best friend Kenneth Crichton. Crichton is the grandson of Lord Brian Fallsworth, who fought alongside the team known as the Invaders in World War II. Shortly after Crichton reveals this to Chapman, the vampire Baron Blood infiltrates the Fallsworth Mansion. Chapman dons the costume and proves his worth in battle against the vampire, leading Kenneth to suggest that it should be Chapman who carries on the Union Jack tradition. Despite his humble beginnings, Chapman's access to the Fallsworth fortune and his own work with the British Secret Service affords him plenty of resources to pursue his fight against evil. This wealth helps pay for his numerous gadgets, his bulletproof costume, and barrel, his high-tech motorcycle. Stephen Strange begins his superheroic journey by spending all the wealth he earned as a surgeon on anything that might heal his hands. 3D printing a scaffold. If I could get a loan together, just Steven, small loans, just 200,000. You've always spent money as fast as you can make it, but now you're spending money you don't even have. Becoming a master of the mystic arts eventually mends his broken digits, and it makes him rich again, too. Doctor Strange's wealth is made most clear in the ownership and upkeep of his Greenwich Village Sanctum Sanctorum, and the long employment of his faithful friend and comrade-in-arms, Wong. There are plenty of other obvious examples of his wealth lying around his home, too. While many of the antiques and artifacts in his vast collection are no doubt the product of adventure, some of them were just as likely purchased by Strange himself. Moreover, in 1989's Doctor Strange Sorcerer Supreme No. 11, readers learn Strange owns a nearby warehouse for the sole purpose of storing the cryogenically frozen corpse of his brother, Victor. Earlier in that series, Strange's pockets proved deep enough for his friend Sarah Wolf to set up a memorial foundation in his name after he is believed to have died. As any fan of Highlander will know, living for many centuries is a surefire way to get rich. This is a lesson well learned by the eons-old Ulysses Bloodstone, a caveman saddled with a mythical stone that gives him both his surname and his unnaturally long life. Ulysses spends his considerable time on Earth hunting monsters and searching for Luxal Quante Sin, the creature who destroyed his ancient tribe. Ulysses eventually finds both vengeance and his long-awaited eternal reward, but not before siring a daughter. In 2001's Bloodstone No. 1, Marvel introduced Elsa Bloodstone, who learns of her father's fantastic past while settling his estate. Not long after, with the help of the fabled gem her father left her and a solid set of superpowers, Elsa follows in her father's footsteps. Elsa also inherited Ulysses' massive fortune upon his death. Her first solo series was short-lived, but she continues to use her wealth to fund her crusade against the world's monsters, perhaps most memorably in the acclaimed series Next Wave, Agents of Hate. Janet Van Dyne, better known as the Wasp, begins her crime-fighting career after the death of her father, Vernon. Vernon was a world-renowned inventor at the time of his death, and his demise not only inspires Janet to become a hero, but also gifts her with a ton of cash. And she's not shy about it either. Early on in her avenging days, Janet is known both among her teammates and the public as a socialite and an incorrigible flirt, not to mention a fashion plate. And although she later curbs her more extravagant impulses, Janet never entirely loses her love of the finer things in life. A fashion designer whose career predates her time as an Avenger, Janet uses her fortune to further her art. She changes her costume so often that it's not all that rare to see her in one outfit in one issue and a different one in the next. Her designs can also be glimpsed in other corners of the Marvel Universe. For example, Carolina Dean can be spotted wearing Van Dyne-branded clothing in the 2017 Runaways comic series. 
Often, when new writers and artists are assigned superheroes who have never been particularly popular, those creators like to shake up the character's essential traits. Mark Spector, aka Moon Knight, is a perfect example of this, as recent takes on the character have tended to minimize the fact that this mentally splintered superhero is a bona fide billionaire. Long before he became the Fist of Khonshu, Spectre was a renowned mercenary and heavyweight boxing champion. By the time he begins fighting evil as Moon Knight, his investments have yielded some serious rewards. While his resources are not inherited as Bruce Wayne's are, Spectre's wealth is one of the reasons some fans see him as Marvel's answer to Batman. Not only does he mostly work at night, but his wealth also affords him an arsenal of themed weapons, vehicles, gadgets, and costumes. And sure, he's not as widely known in the Marvel Universe as Batman is within the world of DC Comics, but Moon Knight isn't to be underestimated. Dude has a mooncopter, after all. Honestly, Charles, I don't know how you survived living in such hardship. Little of the good Charles Xavier has done for mutant kind would have been possible without his considerable wealth. Indeed, the grounds and the mansion used for Xavier's school for gifted youngsters is inherited from his father. That fortune was likewise used to build the more secret areas of Xavier's school, such as the Danger Room, in addition to the X-Men's vast variety of high-tech vehicles. Thanks to a story from the early 2000s, we know that at that time, Charles Xavier's net worth was $3.5 billion. This is revealed in 2002's New X-Men number 129, when the artificially evolved mutant known as Phantom X tries to extort Xavier. Of course, it's likely that Xavier's fortune has increased considerably since 2002. Not only is the founder of the X-Men known for investing wisely, but the 2019 event Dawn of X likely did a lot of good for Xavier's bottom line. In this arc, Xavier helps to found a new sovereign mutant state on the sentient mutant island of Krakoa, a process that includes brokering lucrative deals with other nations who are seeking medicines only available on Krakoa. Warren Worthington III has often acted as one of the X-Men's deepest pockets, having inherited billions from his family as well as ownership of Worthington Industries, Archangel funds everything from missions to equipment. In fact, it has not been unheard of for Charles Xavier himself to borrow money from Archangel in order to make repairs, additions, and improvements to his Westchester school. Financially speaking, Warren is also solely responsible for the founding of the first version of X-Factor, the team set up by the original X-Men to hunt and secretly help mutants on the run. It's Warren who bankrolls their equipment, their headquarters, and their new uniforms. Warren's history has often worked against his resources, however, such as when his board of directors uses his temporary amnesia to take the company from him. Thankfully, in 2012's Wolverine and the X-Men number 19, Warren successfully takes back his family's company, with a little help from Ace Attorney Matt Murdock, of course. Daniel Rand is more than just a master of kung fu and the hard-won wielder of the Iron Fist. He's also CEO of the Rand Corporation, a position which has afforded Rand and his allies many comforts and advantages, but it has also attracted plenty of new enemies. Originally the Rand Meacham Corporation, the company passes briefly into the care of Harold Meacham, Daniel's father's old business partner. Wendell Rand had visited the mystical city of Kunlun once upon a time and searches for it in the snows of Tibet years later with his son, wife, and Meacham in tow. Disaster strikes, however, and when Wendell hangs helplessly from the edge of a precipice, Meacham turns on him and throws him to his death. Daniel's mother Heather subsequently sacrifices herself to save Daniel from hungry wolves, allowing the young Danny Rand to find shelter and more in Kunlun. As an adult, Danny returns to New York City and regains control of Rand, though his revenge on Meacham is stolen from him by an assassin. He has since used his vast wealth to fund his work as the immortal Iron Fist, including funding the Heroes for Hire, an organization Rand and Luke Cage founded to help fight crime. Kyle Richmond, aka Nighthawk, is perhaps the most obscure of Marvel's wealthy heroes. As part of the Squadron Sinister, he was originally a villainous Batman clone in a group of villains blatantly modeled after DC Comics' Justice League. 
He later changes sides, most prominently as a regular in Marvel's first Defenders series. Like many rich Marvel heroes, Kyle Richmond inherited his wealth from his father, in this case Arthur Richmond, owner of Richmond Enterprises. Nighthawk doesn't always prove to be a vigilant owner of the company he inherited, however. While he's busy first committing crime and then fighting it, he allows his friend J.C. Pennysworth to handle the reins. Pennysworth is later revealed to be the head of the racist terror group the Sons of the Serpent, which makes you wonder if Nighthawk really did his due diligence on the guy. Richmond subsequently uses his wealth to establish the Richmond Riding Academy, which doubles as a base of operations for the Defenders. Or at least it's intended to serve as such. With team members Hulk and Doctor Strange often not showing up for work, Richmond complains about all the money he spent for nothing, particularly on the oversized conference chair he had made for the Hulk. While Professor X's history is not without its moral ambiguity, Marvel Comics canon has long maintained that he never uses his psychic abilities to help with his investments. However, Xavier isn't Marvel's only psychic, and they don't all share his principles. Emma Frost certainly isn't afraid to use her formidable telepathy to gain an edge in the financial world. It's likely a good chunk of her wealth may come from even sketchier ventures. Frost is, after all, the former White Queen of the Hellfire Club, which is not known for its respect of the law. Emma is the heiress to the Frost fortune, including Frost International, which specializes in technology and electronics. When the X-Men establish the mutant safe haven of Utopia, it's Frost's wealth alone that supports the island. Her power has grown considerably in recent years too, with almost the entire population of Earth's mutants having joined the sovereign nation of Krakoa, Frost's position on the island's quiet council is a lofty perch indeed. Reed Richards isn't exactly obsessed with hoarding wealth. Put him in a lab and give him the chance to explore the cosmos and you've got a happy Mr. Fantastic. But believe it or not, the upkeep of an active portal to the negative zone and the storage space for a fleet of Fantastic cars isn't cheap. So it's a good thing Richards also happens to be one of Marvel's wealthiest heroes. Richard wasn't always wealthy, but the patents for the inventions he churns out, not to mention the merchandising rights for the Fantastic Four, bring in the big bucks. Still, Reed is the kind of guy who doesn't see his riches until they're gone. Thus, he and the rest of the Fantastic Four are hit hard when their property is seized in an early 2000s storyline. After Doctor Doom is dragged to hell, the team dismantles the government of Latveria in the hopes of undoing Doom's years of tyranny. When they return home, their assets are seized by the government because of their unsanctioned invasion of a foreign nation. It isn't until Richard emerges as one of the most prominent pro-government heroes in Civil War that the United States releases their stranglehold on his property. Unlike many of the richest Marvel heroes, Sable didn't inherit anything from her family, unless you count the skills she's used to become one of the world's most well-known mercenaries. Her father trained her to fight after the murder of her mother, and Sable went on to found her own soldier for hire company, Silver Sable International. Silver Sable's wealth is enough to afford her the acquisition of high-tech weaponry and a vast variety of other equipment made from cutting-edge materials. It is also enough to allow her to hire other world-class mercenaries, including super-powered operatives. Although she can be cutthroat in business, Sable doesn't amass her riches for riches' sake. Much of her wealth goes to aid her homeland, the fictional nation of Simkaria. Like Thor, the Marvel hero Hercules isn't just a modern-day strongman with a love of Greco-Roman myth. He's the genuine god, and his long life has afforded him some very deep pockets. This is never more clear than upon the news of his temporary death in 2010's Hercules Fall of an Avenger No. 1. When Venus and Nomura do the hard work of closing out Hercules' estate, they learn he was one of the first investors in Stark Industries. He initially invested $100,000 in the young company, and at the time of the strongman's death, that investment was worth, quote, a second line of zeros. He also owns a large number of breweries and wineries, as well as apartments and homes all across the globe. And while Hercules is one of the richest heroes in Marvel, it seems that he himself may not even know it, as Venus and Nomura discover that he apparently forgot about most of his investments. If ever there were a superhero in need of an accountant, it's this guy. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. 
When you think of rich Marvel heroes, it's a sure bet that you'll probably think of Tony Stark. He may have inherited his huge fortune and Stark Industries from his father Howard, but Stark can't be accused of sitting on his laurels. In fact, it's likely that no single person has more to do with the upkeep of the Avengers than Tony Stark. More often than not, his wealth has financed the team even before he reveals his secret identity to his colleagues and later the public at large. It's Stark who owns Avengers Mansion, it's Stark who employs their butler, Edwin Jarvis, and it's Stark who pays for and designs the team's Quinjets. Not to mention, of course, the considerable amount of time, money, and resources Stark puts towards designing and building his many Iron Man suits, nor the innovations he's created for other heroes, such as Spider-Man's famous Iron Spider suit. There are characters whose wealth is almost impossible to quantify because their existence is utterly incomparable to anything in the real world. Black Bolt, Medusa, and the rest of the Inhuman royal family are a perfect example of this. The Inhumans are a subspecies of humanity that was experimented upon by the alien Kree millennia ago, a process that granted them extraordinary abilities and access to stunning amounts of wealth. Having made homes in both the Himalayas and on the blue area of the moon, the royal family claims real estate holdings that are entirely priceless. They also have in their possession advanced Kree technology, which plenty of Earth's militaries would pay dearly to get their hands on. Finally, the family possesses the Terrigen Crystals, which are counted among the rarest materials in the solar system. Namor, the king of Atlantis, claims all of the Earth's oceans as his kingdom, and according to him, the ships that traverse them are only allowed to do so because of his charity. While few world leaders recognize Namor's claim to two-thirds of the Earth's surface, he certainly has the muscle to back it up. When you're a super-powered world ruler in Marvel Comics, losing your throne becomes kind of a big deal. As such, Namor has found himself dethroned more times than anyone can count. Yet, even without a kingdom, the Submariner has managed to secure significant wealth for himself. Early in the 90s Namor the Submariner series, for example, Namor reinvents himself as a businessman by using various treasures from the deep. The fortune these rarities bring him allows him to found Oracle Inc. with the intention of using its wealth to heal the environment. No organization on Earth could surpass Wakanda in terms of net worth, and no individual could top T'Challa, the king of Wakanda, and the superhero known as Black Panther. Though the 2016 Black Panther series sees T'Challa's power as ruler rendered less absolute by a new democratic government, he still has more control over his nation's wealth than any other single person. The source of the nation's wealth is vibranium, a substance that cannot be found in significant amounts anywhere else on Earth. Vibranium is the most versatile metal on Earth and has helped to make Wakanda not only the richest, but also the most technologically advanced nation on the planet. While T'Challa doesn't often flex his financial muscles, it's not unheard of either. For example, in the 2002 Black Panther storyline Enemy of the State 2, in which he finds himself at cross-purposes with Tony Stark, T'Challa stages a hostile takeover of Stark Enterprises, with seemingly no effort at all. There are some riches whose worth cannot be properly counted with numbers, and many of them are the property of Thor, the God of Thunder. Slow down a little bit. There's a few people in the room that don't understand. Not me. I, I get it. In 2019's Thor number 16, Odin steps aside, allowing Thor to become the new Allfather and the King of Asgard. Once that happens, every drop of gold in the land in the Golden Realm becomes the property of the mighty Thor, as well as all the artifacts locked away in Odin's vaults. One of the most valuable artifacts in Thor's collection is the one he's known best for, his iconic hammer Mjolnir. While it's best known for its ability to summon and control lightning, the hammer's versatility is equally impressive. Not to mention the fact that the Odin Sun is one of only a handful of people who have been able to wield the weapon at all. Chances are, there's no Marvel weapon out there with a higher price tag. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about Marvel Comics are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!